Johnny was at the forum was you know, fighting like cats and dogs. Agencies say the publishers being unhelpful, the publisher says the agency doesn't understand that we don't make money if we do it, and the client saying, why don't you guys give any coverage? Okay. So how do we, you know, what, what do we need to do differently, really, so that we're all getting part of the marketing dollars, because that's where we're all, where we're all trying to get out that living from. So that's the background. Okay. So therefore, everything will come in from a, uh, a corporation via or direct from their public relations agency immediately goes into my, well, that's going to be for online. That's news. Okay. And then I look at uh, the, the uh, business model for, for online and you sell CPM. So every story has to attract a certain number of views. Right. Now, a story that is fed to us, like let's say a good story. If I, if I had someone talk to three people, do a really good story or something for, that a journalist does that is not fed, on one of my websites, may attract 4,000 people to read it. You sell the ads against that, you might, online oh, doesn't make much money, you might make, you know, a couple hundred bucks. A story that is fed to you, we're launching this new thing, we're launching that new thing, we're doing this, our CEO's coming out, do want to talk to him? That wouldn't get you 4,000 reads. That wouldn't even get you 400 reads. It would get you 40 to 80 reads. Because it's boring news. You can't force people to read it. They've got to decide to click on it. Unless you have a vested interest in that company. Yeah. Then yeah, you read it. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you, you, so if, if you're looking at 100 reads or 200 reads, you're looking at a revenue of about ten dollars, maybe five to ten on a good day if you sold all your inventory. Right. Now, if they want me to send someone down to cover some event, go down, right, come back at three hours of time, it's going to be at least cost me 150, 200 dollars. Something's going to only return me five dollars. You soon go broke that way. So it really comes down to. Um, how can you reduce my cost of content? Mm. And um, okay, so, so for the bloggers, they're doing it for the love, that's great. Um, not many industries can get bloggers writing pieces mm. for the love. Uh, so that, that's really where it's at. And it really gets down to the stage of even, um, if I look at you know every 100 press releases we get in, and I don't want to go to any of them, but then I still have to deal with all the phone calls. Did you get the press release? Did you see it? Are you going to run it? I have to employ someone to take those phone calls. Mm. Again, that is becoming uh, an irrelevant waste of time to take the calls. Well, yes, did you get a bounce back message? No. Well, email works. You get 100 emails a day, and uh, if we want to run it, well, look on the website. So, when uh, 15 years ago I started East West, we charged about $2,500 to do a press release distribution for us. Now it's maybe fifteen hundred dollars. So, for the for the same amount of work, a decade and a half later, okay, it's nearly half the price. Yeah. So, what the one of the challenges on on the agency side is the client actually still asks the agency to do the same thing. It, it's not that the agency doesn't struggle. That's why we wanted to have a conversation with this because when we talk to clients and say it's not the same anymore, mm. their response is it's because you can't do it. <laughs> Right? So they'll say, in China they say, you need to guarantee me coverage. And so what happens is the agencies, although we do not, but the, many agencies in China just pay the journalist to turn up. Because the client still says, if you're a PR, I want coverage. And we say, well actually you may only need to talk to 30 CIOs to sell your software for banking. And they say, but I want to be in, this bank, in the Straits Times. So 200,000 people in Singapore aren't going to buy banking software. 30 are. So a big challenge for the agency is the economics have changed, their budget for PR is much less in real terms than it used to be. The, the, agent, the client still expects the agency to do the same work as it was doing, because often it's a 40, 50 year old CEO who says, I just want to be in the Straits Times. And as a result then, when we employ people, there isn't the budget anymore, because the client says, I'll give you 15 hours worth of time. By the time we put all the material together, briefed it, managed to navigate Tim's email system and get hold of him, it's actually not economical for us. If five CIOs, and when I was a software vendor, if five CIOs read my posting, it's much more valuable than 10,000 people who actually have no interest or buying cycle starting in the background actually read my posting. Yes, but that's not to me as the publisher. Not, not to you, exactly, and this is where we come back so to So you, if you can only get five views, mm. 
I will let you write your, your piece for free and put it on my website. Actually, you know what? If you can only draw five people to read your article, I wouldn't even give you space on my that's website. Right. Yeah. But this is but that's this, no, this we, is the challenge though as well as an agency is how do we when these guys have got this economics, these guys can basically write at will. And the agency historically has been paid either an hourly fee or a project fee to get access to a publisher and because he had this he was the guardian of ten thousand copies. But it's and, and somehow, keep in mind it's called public relation, not publisher relation. The we reach public we will go through sorry to say we, we reach publishers, journalists and editors and so on simply because there seem to be a way to reach the public. Now what's actually happened, so if you're not gonna give me the five, for example, yeah. that I want and I'm only interested in those five CIOs. And yeah. I remember the way the discussion I used to have with mm. other publishers and so on. And I said, Well, it's okay, I'm going to put it into SlideShare. And I'll get those five CIOs, or I'll put it into YouTube, I'll put it into my own personal blogs, etc. And what I'll do is I'll use other marketing techniques to let them know that this is actually being published and so on. So it's a, again, it's a different yeah, work to in that, in that PR with a journalist. But also keep in mind, it's public relation. It's about the public. I have to reach them no matter what. So the interest of the PR agency, the interest of the as an ex customer, is that we want to reach the public. If the publishers, for their own economic interests, will not bring me access to them, that's fine. Mm. They'll become just one, just like a, uh, I said, that some, some kind of um, decision tree. I need to reach the end user, and I'm going to use PR, I'm going to use marketing, I'm going to use sales, I'm going to use blah, blah, blah. One of them within the PR world will be the publishers, who will ask me because the question, I have to understand what your readers want to read, and if my story is interesting, then we, we work together. If you don't find it interesting, I need to know very quickly, I'll find another. The, the positive take out from this is that clients need to understand the media cycle a lot better and need to understand that they need to tailor interesting messages for different areas of the media cycle. And if they can understand that, that it's not one size fits all but be more accommodating to the demands of the media operators, they'll find they'll get to a better